It's official. The Mount Cashel Orphanage, once the respected symbol of Newfoundland charity, is closing. The announcement was made today in St. John's by the Christian Brothers, the religious order that runs Mount Cashel. The orphanage is now mired in scandal involving sexual and physical abuse of boys who lived there and the alleged cover-up of a police investigation. Chris Decker is Acting Minister of Social Services in Newfoundland. Mr. Decker, who made the actual decision to close Mount Cashel? It was a decision which was made by the Congregation of Christian Brothers themselves. The government did not uh, make the decision. We talked to the leader of the Christian Brother, Brother Frank uh, Heptich, on Friday. He said he was having discussions with the Newfoundland government. Um, what, can you give me a, an idea of what those discussions were about? Was it timing or the decision or what? Yes, it was mostly about the timing, I guess, and also the decision. He exp expressed uh, grave concerns. Uh, I was there representing the government at the meetings, and uh, he was very concerned about the, the pressure and the strains which have been placed on the boys in that home over the past months. He was concerned about the pressure on staff as well, and uh, in, in, in that, uh, that, I think that's what uh, was the determining factor where he made his decision. What about uh, finding places for the 40 or so boys who are currently at Mount Cashel? I'm sure Newfoundland is suffering from a shortage of foster homes, as many other provinces are. Yes, it's not as bad as you might think. On the one hand, uh, over half the boys in there are over 16 years of age. Some of them are attending university. Some of them are in trade school or other schooling, other schools. Uh, some of them are working. So that particular group, we'll have to look at some other uh, alternate housing for them. Some are capable of going to apartments. Some could be to, taken into various university residences in the case of one attending, attending uh, uh, university. It will be a matter of helping them make the transition, I would think, uh, from the orphanage into uh, a different uh, way of life. Now, that's for the ones over 16. The ones under 16, we're going to have to find out uh, where we can get uh, foster homes for them, or whatever uh, kind of relation, uh, or whatever kind of facility we can find for them. And I'll, I'll uh, admit it's not going to be easy. But there's one good thing about all this: the brothers have made it perfectly clear that they are prepared to phase the operation down. It's not a matter of saying, "Okay, boys, the bus is in. Let's get all ends get out." It's, uh, it's going to be phased in over a period of time, as long as it takes, uh, well, Brother Heptich said. Over how long a period of time? Until the last boy is found a, a home for? Absolutely, until the last boy. If that takes a year, so be it. Uh, I would We're, think it will probably be done in six months, but uh, it's until the last boy is cared for. Will your government help at all in terms of perhaps paying uh, or helping to supplement the incomes of some of these kids if they have to live in apartments and so on? And well, the... There are uh, government uh, programs in place right now uh, for, uh, well, the, on the ones who are furthering their education, there are student loans available, which uh, most uh, students can take advantage of. And we have, uh, in the welfare system, there is an income, income support system for people whose means, they have to take a means test, of course. So these programs are there, and they'll be able to uh, take part in them as any other citizen in the province. Mr. Decker, what if the Christian brothers had decided, had decided to go the other way? In other words, what if, if Brother Heptich had said to you, we want to keep it open? I don't think that that possibility, uh, that, that kind of question could have come, because I've met uh, Brother Heptich, and I've met uh, some of the brothers, and uh, there's no way that they would have uh, asked that it would remain open. They're very concerned about the boys in the home. And, uh, you know, uh, it, orphanages as such is pretty well an outmoded uh, means of caring for, for young people. Uh, the Mount Cash is certainly the last one that the Christian brothers have, I believe, in North America. And there is no great number of orphanages left in North America. It's sort of, uh, even if... The recent news inquiry was not going. I would suggest that uh, it would only be a matter of a year or two, and the orphanage possibly would have phased down anyway. So I, I, I think it would be highly unlikely that the Christian brothers would have insisted that this facility remain open. So I, I don't think the question could even be speculated on. Some people are describing the closure as uh, sad in a way. Even some former residents and, uh, and uh, Archbishop Penny said it's sad. Do you see anything sad about this? Yes, I do. It's, it's got 90 years of history. 
And I have a lot of friends. I'm not Roman Catholic myself, but I have an awful lot of friends who went through the Mount Cashel Orphanage. I, I, I can name lawyers. I can name medical people. I can name professional people. I can name good, hard-working Newfoundlanders who went through there. And the vast majority of them have fond memories of the institution. And even when you look at the charges which have been laying now against some of the Christian brothers, uh, they're in a very small minority. You know, I think if you were to weigh the good that the facility did against the bad, uh, the bad uh, things which have happened in the last little while, I think you would have to agree that uh, there is every reason in the world why people should be sad, because it is a, it is a tradition, and there was a lot of good done there. And, and yes, I feel sad about it. This time of the year I, especially, you know. Yeah, if this Christmas. were another year... Uh, yeah. It's quite possible the Mount Cashel raffle, raffle would be going ahead down on Water Street, which has been going on for years, when the boys and the brothers used to get there and raffle off turf, uh, turkeys to, to raise money for the institution. Mr. Decker, do you think that, that the government, that you and your colleagues are, have to be concerned and have to face a kind of new reality here as far as public confidence in the, so, in the social service system in Newfoundland works? In other words, you're going to have to win back the confidence of Newfoundlanders because of what has gone on at Mount Cashel, and what flowed from that? We are trying to find out where the justice system failed, where the social services system failed. And uh, they're going, they're, there's a lot of uh, confidence which has to be won back. And, uh, and I, myself, and members of our government, we uh, have to, to restore confidence in the system and make sure, and make sure that it works for, for, for the good of, of our people. Mr. Decker, thank you. You're kindly welcome. Good night. The damage that that Roman papacy has done, and I hope it explodes. They are some uncircumcised dogs. I hope that they are castrated so that they do not have any more children, so that they do not produce that species anymore. When I speak like this, I speak of that stinking pen. And then they want you to respect them. Respect our religions. Religion is not to be respected. You uncover the truth. You say the truth. No matter what!